Today, I'm gonna do a test that may seem unconventional for a 3D printer, but it could prove beyond doubt that it's time for every single household to consider owning a 3D printer. And by the end of this episode, you might just feel the same. But the device that has made me feel this way is this, the Anker M5C. You guessed it, by Anker. This is one of Anker's first 3D printers aside from the M5, which is essentially the big brother of this. And I've been utterly wowed by this ever since I opened it. And well, I say I opened it, it was actually Ryan, the cameraman who opened it and assembled it because that's what I pay him for. But it turned out actually far quicker to assemble than I thought it was going to. It's almost pre-built, which makes things incredibly easy for anyone who just wants to get stuck in. Straight away, you can see that the design just oozes simplicity and quality. Everything looks really well put together and designed. There's no exposed circuitry and very few visible cables. And as for the controls, it only has one, a giant play and pause button on the base of the unit. So if there's only one button, how do you control it? Well, there's an app for that. Of course, there's the usual slicing software, which you can download on your computer, which gives you full control. But I think what really sets the AnchorMake M5C above all other competing products is its app. Now, once you've paired it up to the app, it gives you some stats such as current status, its temperature, and allows you to control various things like offset and maintenance. It also lets you initiate the auto leveling process, something which makes this printer super accessible. Now, manual leveling is one of the most painful processes in the world. It's basically where you take this bed and make sure that it's level. And if you do it wrong even slightly, it will bugger up your entire print and you likely won't realize several hours into the print itself. So the fact that the M5C takes out human error and performs the leveling completely by itself is a fantastic feature. But this isn't even the best bit about the app. The thing that's blown me away is the Explore tab. Tapping into this, you get access at the time of this episode to 237,496 different 3D models through both the Anchor Make and Printable community. Now what makes this printer stand out is that I can search for any model and print it directly from the app. No slicing the software, no messing around importing, no exporting, no saving to USB sticks or memory cards. It's all done through the app at the tap of a button. You simply pick a model, click to download it, and then it provides you with a few simple options, such as what filament I'm using, whether or not I wanted it printed in fast, standard, or high quality, and a couple of other settings, such as the adhesion and infill and the supports toggle, which you can play around with it at will. For the most part, you could leave most of these settings as default, but even if you don't, these are the core settings that most people will ever need when printing. But once you've chosen those settings, hit print and you're done. It prints off whatever you've chosen to do. Now there's also the Anchor Make It Real platform, which allows you to do things like create your own lithophanes and even print out 3D maps of cities using the map selector, which is pretty cool. It seriously could not be simpler, and I absolutely love this process that Anchor Make have built into the software and the overall experience of the M5C. From opening the parcel to printing off your first print has to be around about 10 minutes or less. And that's even with zero knowledge of how 3D printers work, which is an almost unparalleled experience. And talking about the impressive speed in which you can start the printing, what's even more impressive is the speed in which it can actually print. This is next to unbelievable. Now, I'm pretty certain that you get a witch's curse if the first model you print out on a 3D printer isn't the Benchy Boat, which is used generally as a benchmark for 3D printers. So I thought I would try and print the boat direct from the app and see how fast this will print it out on the fast mode. And it finished the printing in just over 30 minutes, half an hour. A small model of a boat was able to materialize out of thin air. That to me is just absolutely insane. And what's even better is that it's so quiet in comparison to other printers I've used in the past, even at this blinding speed. But to go one step further, what's even more insane is the quality it manages at that speed. I expected the fast mode Benchy to be 
absolutely higgledy piggledy and look like a mess. But I printed a high quality version at a slower setting to compare the differences. And although there are some, I bet you probably can't tell just by looking at them. And this is on the standard 0.4 mil nozzle as well. I'm just so impressed at the quality that this thing can deliver with minimal effort and maximum speed. But obviously Benshi is a pretty straightforward model to print. So with the witch's curse now broken, I decided to print something a little bit more complex and push the limits. So I decided to print out my own benchmark model, Stulia Caesar, which if you couldn't tell is my head on a Roman general's body. Overall, the printer's done a fantastic job, and size-wise, this was the tallest we could make it with the build volume maximum of 220 by 220 with a height of 250. Now, this is a mid-range print volume in total, but given that I printed to the maximum height you could do, you'll never guess how long it took to print Julius Caesar. If you guess 30 hours, you'd be wrong. If you guess 20 hours, you'd be wrong again. If you guess 10 hours, you'd be wrong. It took only six and a half hours to print Julius Caesar at that size. That is just blindingly fast. On other printers, this has taken over a day to print at the bare minimum. So it's super, super impressive. Seriously, is this type of speed and accuracy and performance that has made me rethink how I look at 3D printing. No longer do I have to tinker around for two hours before printing. No longer do I have to wait 48 hours for something to finish only to find out that I printed the wrong size. I just think that this has some incredible implications to how we actually use 3D printing in our day-to-day -day lives. So to prove that point, I want to set up a little race between myself and this 3D printer. Now it just so happens that I actually need a second shelf bracket for a small shelf that I want to put up in the cellar. And weirdly, I could only find one in the house. God knows where the other one is. But either way, all I know is I don't have a second shelf bracket. So I'm going to have to print one. But at the same time, I'm going to drive to my nearest DIY shop to buy one. And we'll see if this printer is capable of printing out a bracket faster than I'll be actually going to buy one. And go. It's now prepping the 3D print for printing. You can hear it heating up. It's about to start printing any second now. So we better go. Let's go. And with that, we were off. Whilst the printer began its auto leveling process for a perfect print. This to me is what 3D printing is all about. The ability to replace going out and buying a product or ordering it online. When it becomes faster to 3D print something and cheaper and more effective, that's when 3D printing becomes commonplace. Over the years, I'd say that 3D printers have got a bit of a reputation as tinkerous toys. A lot of people end up with 3D printers and then all they do is print out a bunch of plastic objects that end up in the bin. We need to start looking at 3D printers differently. We need to start looking at them as tools, as tools that everybody should have, like a hammer or a screwdriver or a washing machine or a cooker. Everyone should have a 3D printer. As we were arriving at our local builder's merchants, it was clear that the printer was absolutely steaming ahead. I hadn't really thought about this, but of course there was also the added time trying to find the shelf brackets in the first place. Let's go. The printer was well past the halfway point as I was dealing with crippling 20 mile per hour speed limits recently imposed by the fascists in charge of Wales. But as we let's pulled go, into the go. studio, I truly had no idea if we were going to beat this printer. Oh, look at that! <laughs> look at that! Oh, let's move this camera out of the way. Look at that! Whoa! <laughs> That's insane. Oh my God. I'll just put it. Look at that. Look at that. Well. Look at that. 
Now, of course, this shelf bracket isn't going to be as strong as a cast iron bracket, but for you naysayers, I actually think this is less flimsy than the one I brought back from the DIY shop. Look at this, look at this bending here, and this cost me four pounds. And before you start telling me this is a hanging basket bracket, you're wrong. Have a look at the label. Honestly, I have seen, oh my God, I've just bent now. Look at this, I've just bent, look at that. I have seen stronger Kit Kat wrappers than this. Oh my, oh my God, oh my God. Oh God. I'd go as far as saying that my 3D printed shelf bracket is actually better, more robust, more customizable, quicker to get, and ultimately cheaper. It cost me just two pounds 49 pence in filament using Anchor's PLA Plus, and about three pence in electricity to print. This shelf bracket cost me about two pounds in petrol and another four pounds on the bracket itself. So had I just printed, I could have saved myself three pound 52p and that's not even factoring the amount of time that it took me to drive all the way to the nearest DIY place and then all the way back. That's ridiculous. It's this level of ease and simplicity that for me makes this one of the best 3D printers that I've ever used and I mean that. But as always, that doesn't mean that it's perfect. I had two main points to discuss, and the first is the kind of crane that holds the filament. It seems a little bit on the lighter side, a little bit flimsy. I would have perhaps liked a slightly better plastic feeder tube thing at the top. The crane actually is made of metal. That's in itself strong, but the little holder at the top here that feeds the filament into the tubes is plastic. I am nitpicking here a little bit. And the second point is that I'm not too keen on the loading process. You have to manually feed it through the tube yourself when you come to load the PLA rather than it being an auto feeder from the top. With that said, being manual, it does give you some important benefits too, such as being able to seamlessly change the filament during a print process. So it's a bit of a trade-off here, and that way you get multicolored prints. Essentially, all you do is you cut the filament and then feed the next one in as you're going along. I guess it's a bit of a trade-off. Sure, you lose the auto-loading, but you gain more flexibility. But I guess there is one further point. I, I, at first, I wasn't keen on, but I have warmed up to. And that's the open nature of the entire build, as in there's no enclosure for the machine. I've commended printers in the past that use an all-enclosed design, because ultimately it helps with consistency and keeps conditions stable and sterile. However, the massive downside of these is they're just massive. If you look at devices that have an enclosure and a similar build plate volume as the M5C, you'll find a common factor in that almost most of them are nearly double the size of the M5C, which is a rather large inconvenience for people who have very little space. The M5C being so much more compact and smaller in terms of its size, yet being able to print objects of the same size as the ones with huge enclosures is a huge benefit. So again, although it's a slight downside, it happens to come with some massive positives as well. But now we must talk about the cost because without any discounts or sales, the M5C comes to £399, which I think is an excellent price for the experience. When I checked myself, I actually found it on sale for about £349, which is unbeatable value. So I'll drop a link below where you can find it for yourself. But sure, there are cheaper 3D printers out there, but... I can guarantee that none of them have as an accessible experience as this does. Of what I think are some top tier features, you're paying mid-level range price, which is absolutely fantastic. Like many products and brands from Anker, the Anker Make M5C, in my opinion, offers unparalleled functionality at an affordable price that is easier to use and understand than my bloody washing machine is. And what can I say, I've been absolutely blown away with it. What do you think? Do you agree that 3D printers are quickly becoming a household must-have, or are they still not quite there for you? Do let me know in the comments below. I'll be replying to all of your comments over the next few hours, so make sure you drop down there and say hi. And if you enjoyed today's episode, why don't you take a look at our review of some other products by Anker, like the S340 we recently featured and conducted an eye examination on. But don't forget, guys, to hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, check out the link for the Anchor Make M5C in the description below, 
I'll see you back for another episode of Steve's Reviews soon.